Hi everyone, my name is Vanessa Toth. I am an International Admissions Representative at Ashland University. Today we'll be going over how to complete our new International Student Online Application. We've recently updated our application, so hopefully this will answer some of the questions that you have about the whole process. To get started, you will need to go to the Ashland University website, just ashland.edu, as you can see up here in the top left-hand corner. On this homepage, you will see information about the university and generally see pictures of campus. Uh, this is a great website for initial questions about the university, uh, what campus life is like, different programs we offer, things like that. To start your application, we're going to go over here to the right to the Apply Now link, and we're going to select that. This is our application management page. So if you've ever created an application last semester, last year, if we have your name on file, you can find it here on the returning users section under the login page. Today, we are going to create a brand new application. Uh, so we're going to create a new account. So we're gonna select this link here. And we're going to put in our email address. Uh, I am just using our international admissions email address and you're going to put your first name and your last name. I'm just going to go with Vanessa International, just a generic email and name for me today. You're also going to select your birthday. This is just for confirmation purposes so we know whose application goes with what person. And select continue. Now with that email that you just input, we are going to send you a temporary pin, uh, which is used for security purposes. So we know that it is you and this is an active email that you use. I'm going to copy that pin into this. It's about nine digits long here. And I'm going to confirm my birthday again, just so we know that it is you that is completing this application. We're going to log in. Oh, see, I didn't put the pin in properly, so it caught me. I'm going to try again. So as, the, as you go through and say you forget something, the application is smart. It will tell you when you forgot something just like there with I messed up my pin. Uh, but you will progress once you get everything set. We are going to create a password. And as you can see there, the different requirements will turn green once you have met those requirements. With any website, we do we require one letter, at least one capital letter, one number, 12 characters. You have to repeat your password just so it matches. So because I have never created an application, I do not have any application started. If I previously submitted an application, it'll be listed here. Say I just need to edit something, I have more documents to add. Whatever you need, you can go back in and edit your application. But since I've never completed one, I'm going to click Start New Application down here at the bottom. I'm going to go with the application cycle. This is what kind of application you are interested in. So for our undergraduate application, these are students who are interested in four-year bachelor's programs. And the graduate application is for students who are interested in master's or doctoral programs. Today, I'm going to complete the undergraduate application. And again, this is just a confirmation. We have a couple of confirmations built through this application. So you know and we know that everything is correct. For personal backgrounds, this is where you're going to just tell us a little bit more about yourself, uh, where you live, your phone number, things like that. If you spelled your name wrong on the first step, that's okay. You can go and change it now. Uh, your preferred first name would be, say, if your name is Jonathan, but you go by John, you can add that there. If you have a different last name from the one that is listed on most of your documents, please use your new last name here. Uh, a lot of people say their transcripts have a different last name than what they go by now. We just need that information. So again, we can match up documents to the correct application. And then you need your permanent address. Permanent address is where you actually live. I am going to say that I live in Canada, and I'm going to use this address. So this is the address of the Ashton University Office of International Admissions. But see, it says province because Canada uses province, and it lists all the Canadian provinces here. So you 
depending on what country you live in, it'll switch to province or state or region, but all of the regions for that country will be listed. I'm going to say you live in Alberta, Canada. And your mailing address, if it is the same as your permanent address, you can just click that link there and it'll automatically populate in. If your mailing address is different from your permanent address, please include that. If we do have to send you physical documents, we want to make sure that they go to an address where mail is delivered and is reliably delivered. You can also edit your email address. So say your email address that you put in originally maybe isn't an address that you check all that often. Please change it to one that you actually use and check regularly. Email is the most reliable form of communication that we use with our international students and we want you to be able to read what we have sent you. For the phone number, you can just put in uh, the phone number that you use. Again, the more reliable the phone number, the better. And if you have a parent or guardian who is also wants to be a part of the whole application process, you can put in their email address and phone number. It is not required. For your biographical information, please complete as appropriate. And for citizenship information, this is very important for our international students. So we know that you are an international student and we tell you the correct information. Primary citizenship, you tell us just what country you are a citizen of. So again, I'm going to say that I'm a citizen of Canada. If you have a dual citizenship or a secondary citizenship, please select that from the drop down. It's not required. If you are a U.S. permanent resident, please click select this box. You will also need to include your permanent residency card in your application. Uh, U.S. permanent residents are not considered international students, they are considered domestic students, so your application will be a little bit different. Uh, next, you're going to complete the race and ethnicity section as appropriate, and then select continue down at the bottom. The program details and additional information section is what you are interested in studying at Ashton University. For our international student types, we have international first year student and international transfer student. International first year students are students who have never taken any higher education classes previously. International transfer students are students who have taken at least some higher education credits previously. So international transfer students, you might have only one or two semesters, say at a university in your home country or a university in the US and you're transferring out of that school. You could also have an entire bachelor's degree and you want to come to Ashton University for another bachelor's degree. You would still be considered an international transfer student then. If you have questions about what your status is, either the first year student or the transfer student, send an email to international at ashland.edu will help you out and help you figure out which uh, student type you are. I'm going to select that I'm a first year student. And your preferred start term. So these are the two applications that are currently open and accepting uh, applications right now. So we have fall 2020, which starts in August, and spring 2021, which starts in January. We also have a summer term that starts in May but that is currently not open. It's a little too far away for us right now. So I'm going to select the fall 2020 application and my preferred program of study. So my preferred program is what I want to study, what I want to get a degree in. So we list out all of the different programs that Ashton University has. We have over 70, so it is quite a little bit. Uh, if you do not know which program you're interested in or you're like, wow, I want to do education, but look at all these different education programs. What do I want? Talk to us. Send us an email. We'll walk you through the different programs. We'll send you information about them and we'll explain to you what each program offers so you can make the best choice. I am going to select that I'm a biology student. And we have these pre-professional interests, which are a little different. They're not technically majors, they're more just a track that you want to go on. So a lot of our students who want to have some sort of higher level degree will select a pre-professional interest. So a lot of biology students select the pre-medicine track. This just means that as a biology student, you will have more classes that are medicine focused. 
If you are, say, a political science student that wants to be an attorney one day, you can select the pre-law tract. At this time, I'm not going to select a pre-professional interest. It's not a required uh, question on this application. It's just helpful for us to know what you're interested in a little bit more. And your full-time intended enrollment, we are going to be a full-time enrolled student, I apologize there. Uh, international students are required to be a full-time student. You're required to have in-person classes. Uh, we at Ashland University make sure that all of our international students meet those government requirements. So you don't have to worry about that as much. We handle that on our end, but you do need to select that you want to be a full-time student. Uh, at Ashland University, we do have on-campus housing. If you are over the age of 22, you are able to live off campus. If you are over 22, we do have on-campus options if you would like. You, just, you don't have to live on campus. For most students, uh, you are probably going to live on campus. You can select on campus. If you're a little confused, say your birthday is very close to the start day of classes, you don't know if you're going to make it. Talk to us, send us an email, we'll work you through that process. City of birth is a requirement just to help us understand where our students are coming from a little bit more. Uh, I'm just going to say Ashland for right now. Uh, it's really helpful for us to know where students are coming from so we understand where we need to go in the world to find students. If you have applied using a recruitment partner or agency, all of our agencies that are in a partnership with Ashland University are listed. If your agency is not in a partnership with Ashland University, it won't be listed, but still let us know who you're working with. Again, this is not a required question. You do not have an agency or partner that you're working with. You do not have to complete this question. Are you the child or grandchild of an AU alumnus? This is a person who has graduated Ashland University previously. So if your parent or your grandparent did graduate from Ashland University, you would select yes. Most of our international students do not have a parent or grandparent that previously graduated from Ashland University. Are you a military connected student? This would be a student who is connected to the U.S. military. Again, most of our international students are not connected to the U.S. military. And are you a member of the Ohio National Guard? Most of our international students are not a member of the Ohio National Guard. And are you or your parent working for one of our corporate partners? We have a large list of corporate partners um, that work in connection with Ashland University. So you'll feel free to check out that list, see what companies are in partnership with AU. Most international students do not meet that requirement, but you're more than willing to look at it just in case. These activities listed here are activities that you participated in high school. So we want to know who you are as a person, not just what your grades say on your transcript. So this is where you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Were you on the dance team? Were you in the newspaper club? What did you do? What were you interested in? I am going to say that I did intramural sports and I was on the newspaper committee. And then this is the same list of activities but it's what you want to do in college, what you're interested in pursuing. We can send you more information about the different clubs that AU offers if you check these boxes. I'm going to say that I want to do the drama and theater program. I want to be in a musical that Ashton University offers. I'll get a little bit of information about the music and uh, the musical programs. We're going to select continue. So this is now your academic history page. So this is where you tell us what schools that you went to. So I'm going to say that I went to, let's say, Lionsbrook High School in New York. Most high schools and colleges are listed in this. So the CEEB code, the C code is going to automatically populate. If it doesn't automatically populate, Please let us know, we can help you out with that. But you're gonna select your times that you attended this school. And what level of study is it? So what kind of school we were in? It was a high school. And I earned my high school diploma. And date conferred or expected is when you are, when you graduated or when you are expected to graduate. 
If that hasn't happened yet, you can select a date in the future. We understand that students apply to colleges before they are actually graduating high school. It's okay. And if you have a transcript, you can add your file here. If your file is too large and doesn't fit in our system, that's okay. Or if you do not have your transcripts on hand right now, that's also fine. You're more than welcome to email those documents to us at international at ashland.edu. We're going to save and we're going to continue to the next page. This next page is your signature page. So when you type your name here, this means that you, yes, agree that all of the information you have submitted is true and accurate to your knowledge uh, and that you are responsible for all of the information that you've input. I'm just going to put that in there. And then this is a final review page. If you want to go back at any of these sections and say, oh, did I put the correct phone number? You can go back to your personal background section and edit your phone number. If you are confident with everything you did, you can submit your application. If you want to come back in the next day, maybe you know where your transcript is, but you don't have it on hand right now, you can just save for later and you can come back and edit your application at a later date. I'm going to say we are set and I'm going to submit my application. And this is again a confirmation. We have all of these confirmation pages that come up just so you know that everything is being submitted. It's very formal and you're taking responsibility for it. So I'm going to click OK. Give it a moment and we will have our application portal page. So this is your portal. This is actually where you will go in and log in and find out your admissions decision once we have decided on your application. You can also edit some information here. So with the verify address, if you found out that you live on 401 College Road, not College Avenue, you can go here and you can edit your address. That's okay. If you have more materials that you need to upload, like your passport or your additional transcripts, things like that. You can upload those documents here. Again, if the file size is too large, you are more than welcome to email them at international at ashland.edu and we will attach, your to attach them to your application for you. But right now, your application is submitted. You will get a confirmation email from us saying thank you for applying. Um, you're more than welcome to respond to that with any questions that you have. Most likely we will reach out to you as well uh, before we make a decision just to confirm some information that you have on your page and to get to know you as a person a little bit more. But for any questions about your application or Ashton University as a whole, please email us at international at ashton.edu. We would be glad to help you. Again, my name is Vanessa Toth and thank you for watching. Bye.